Hi, I'm Peter and welcome back to the History and Sabre Suites, the channel where I talk about Hema, History and Swords. Now today I want to take a look at the Black Fencer 1796 Light Cavalry Training Sabre, the synthetic version, and compare it to an original I've got here. Now, I don't think I need to introduce Black Fencer, they've been making training swords for probably a decade now. Um, in various iterations, now they also make steel swords and sabers, which are quite great. And also their synthetic sabers have become better and better over the years. And I don't think I need to introduce them in much detail. Now, when a club mate of mine ordered a bunch of swords from Black Fencer, I jumped on board because I haven't um, had, I hadn't had the opportunity to try out one of their light cavalry training sabers. Now they do make a steel version of this. But frankly, I don't think it's worth the cost. Um, you know, I don't really think I'd use it as much and 300 euros is quite a lot of money for a saber that you're not gonna use all, all the time. So the synthetic version seemed like a good way to satisfy my curiosity for this little experiment. And yeah, it's under 100 euros and it gives you a light cavalry training saber, which is sparring friendly, which is great. Now, how does it compare to the original? So first off, the original is by Thomas Craven of Birmingham. Um, the blade is just under 82 centimeters, more like 81 and a half, and it comes in at 925 grams, pretty much spot on. Now in comparison, the synthetic training version has a bit of a longer blade. As you can see, if I, have it, if I hold it side by side, you can see that the synthetic version is a bit longer. It's about 84 centimeters in the blade and it weighs 810 grams, which is quite a bit lighter than the original. But I think that was done on purpose because frankly, um, they've captured the feel of an antique 1796 quite well, um, even if it handles distinctly differently. But you know, um, what I'm trying to say is they captured the idea of the 1796 LC. What do I mean by that? Well, they've captured, you know, all the mass it has in the foible. Now the original flares out here, as does this training version. So the profile is something they've managed to recreate quite well in the synthetic version. And also, um, it's not just that the material is new, also they've added this edge-shaped bevel here, which you can order as an option. I think that's quite beautifully done. Um, you know, it's like a, a bevel that they put on the front edge. If you compare that to one of their older sabers, you know, the front edge used to be squared off like this, and they still make it that way with the, the new gray material. But as an option, you can have this edge shape. And they've done it quite nicely, even up to the hatchet points of the light cavalry version here. But I digress. Now, they, they've managed to put enough weight in the, in the foible here um, via this flare and the profile, just like the original, to give it some real heft at the end of the blade. And that's really what, what you know, makes the 1796 like Cavalry Sabre quite forward-leaning, quite frankly, and they've managed to capture that quite well. Now, if you get this thing moving, you really can't stop it very easily. And this is really where you can see what Roweth means with the circular recoveries that he describes uh, at the beginning of his Art of Defense on Foot. So as soon as you get this thing moving, you really have to make a full circle to get back to a proper guard. Um, you, really, you really notice um, how that works, wielding one of these. Now, I have used it in sparring before making this video, and I'm going to show you some sparring footage right now. And I can tell you it hits quite hard compared to the infantry version. Let me show you the infantry version. I also um, got the newest infantry version alongside the cavalry saber. And if you compare the profile taper, you can see quite a substantial difference in length and in profile taper. Now the infantry version on top, it gets quite slender near the tip and the cavalry version, of course, flares out as it's supposed to. Now this is, as always, great training saber for infantry fencing. And this just has some more mass in the blade. 
Now it hits hard and I think from experience I can tell you it's also quite slow if you're not used to fencing with this on foot, which I'm not, and it's quite hard to control actually. So you need a bit of practice to be able to form proper guards because you just have this additional weight in the foible. And that's where, you know, the training version kind of differs from the original because the original is very thin near the tip. Um, you know, oftentimes just between one and two millimeters thin here. And in order to keep this synthetic um, safe and usable, you have to keep it a lot thicker, of course. So compared to the original, I would say it is, it's even less nimble for fencing on foot than the original already is. It's a quite forward leaning saber. And this one is even more so in my view. Now that's not a bad thing. Um, as I've said, they've captured the idea and overall feel of a 1796 like cavalry saber quite well. But of course, it, it is quite different from an original. Now, what can I say about this? As I said, it's under 100 euros. So if you just want to satisfy your curiosity, um, as I did, um, I highly recommend these. And it's good to have it in your arsenal if you're doing British military swordsmanship, which of course is a system that um, is supposed to work for all kinds of swords, like spadroons, infantry sabers, cavalry sabers as well. So. It's a nice little thing to have around and, you know, use at the club for various activities and just for general sparring. So I hope um, you learned something from this video and enjoyed watching it. And if you did, please give me a like and also subscribe to my channel for more content in the future. And on that note, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye bye.